Attention Westwood residents. This is a community notification of a new sexually violent predator in your area. Please stay tuned to the following short program for more information. Hi, I'm Technician Ron Hackett with the Denver Police Department. The Sex Offender Registration and Compliance Unit at DPD is responsible for the registration, monitoring, and tracking of all registered sex offenders and sexually violent predators who live in the city and county of Denver. Here's a brief history of sex offender legislation in Colorado. Our state laws trickle down from federal government mandates. In 1994, we had the Jacob Wetterling Act, which mandated that states would establish a sex offender list. Megan's Law of 1996 said that the public would have access to those sex offender registration lists. The Pam Lichner Act of 1996 stated that some offenders might have to have lifetime registrations. And the Adam Walsh Act of 2006 unified sex offender laws across the country. In Colorado, the legislature has determined that sexually violent predators, by definition, pose a higher risk to the community at large and therefore mandated that upon their release from the Department of Corrections, the community must be notified. Sex offender notification in Colorado happens in two ways. The first is passive and ongoing through the sex offender registration process, which is a list maintained by local police departments. The second way is active via community notification for those offenders determined to be sexually violent predators by the courts or by the parole board. Most sex offenders in Colorado are supervised by the criminal justice system in our communities. Most sex offenders engage in crossover behavior, which means they may have been arrested for one type of crime, but be apt to commit another. Many sex offenders have no criminal history at all prior to their arrest. There is no typical sex offender, but all tend to be deceptive, manipulative, and secretive. 80 to 93% of sex offenses are committed by someone known to the victim. Sexual deviancy begins in mid to late adolescence. Sex offenses are not impulsive. They are usually carefully planned, and most sex offenders are male. The community has a vested interest in helping offenders to be successfully managed in the community. Sex offenders have the same need for housing and employment as any other citizen. Any citizen who uses sex offender information to harass, threaten, or intimidate an offender will be subject to criminal prosecution. There are approximately 16,500 registered sex offenders in the state of Colorado. About 65% of convicted sex offenders are placed in the community on probation. The remainder are in the Department of Corrections or Community Corrections. Offenders may be caught for one type of offense, but be at a high risk to commit another type. Crime of conviction is only one indicator of risk. A sexually violent predator must register with the Denver Police Department Sex Offender Registration Unit every three months for the rest of their life. The offender's residence must be verified quarterly by the Denver Police Department. The full sex offender registration list is available by calling the Denver Police Department Identification Bureau at 720-913-6756. Convicted felons and those with multiple convictions are posted online at denvergov.org slash police. Remember, Sexually violent predators do not represent all dangerous sex offenders. The community notification process and sex offender registration are not a complete deterrent to sexual assault. Now, here's a look at the newest sexually violent predator living in Denver. Here's an overview of the registered sex offenders currently living in Denver. There are 2,390 total living within city limits. In Denver Police District 4, there are 442. Precinct 412 has 84 registered sex offenders. Of those, 59 have felony convictions and 25 have misdemeanor convictions. Timmy Lee Ott is a sexually violent predator currently living in Denver. He's 38 years old and was born on August 24, 1985. He's a white male, 5 feet 10 inches tall, 165 pounds, with brown hair and hazel eyes. He's currently living at 541 South Stewart Street in the Westwood neighborhood of Denver. Schools located within one mile of this offender include Castro Elementary at 845 South Lowell Boulevard, Knapp Elementary at 500 South Utica Street, Monroe Elementary at 3440 West Virginia Avenue, Brady High School at 5220 West Ohio Avenue, Rocky Mountain Prep Southwest at 911 South Hazel Court, Kip Sunshine Peak Elementary at 3400 West Nevada Place. Parks located within one mile of this offender include Weir Gulch Park South, Quattro Vientos Four Winds Park, Ford Place Park, Garfield Lake Park, Westwood Utility Easement, Kentucky and Knox Park, Westwood Park, Kentucky and Irving Park, Westwood Rec Center Grounds, 
Weir Gulch Park North, Dryling Park. Bus routes located within one mile of this offender include Route 51, Sheridan Boulevard, Route 11, Mississippi Avenue, Route 3, Alameda Avenue. A brief history of charges against this offender. Attempted sexual assault on a child, attempted incest, and sexual assault 10-year age difference. He's not currently on parole or probation and registered with the Denver Police Department on May 24, 2024 to 541 South Stewart Street in the Westwood neighborhood of Denver. Past charges against this offender include Assault, robbery, carrying a concealed weapon, theft, burglary, DUI, trespass, invasion of privacy, disturbing the peace, parole violation. Timmy Lee Ott has been determined a sexually violent predator after meeting the following criteria. Criteria 1, age 18 or older on the date of the offense, or under 18 and tried as an adult. The offender was age 24 at the time of the offense. Criteria 2, the crime must have been committed on or after July 1, 1997 and convicted on or after July 1, 1999. Crimes include sexual assault, felony unlawful sexual contact, sexual assault on a child, sexual assault on a child by a person in a position of trust. The offender was convicted on April 4, 2011 for attempted sexual assault on a child, attempted incest, and sexual assault 10-year age difference. Criteria 3. The relationship to the victim was one of the following. Victim was a stranger to the offender, or the offender established or promoted a relationship with the victim primarily for the purpose of sexual victimization. The female victims were known to the offender. Criteria 4. Positive results or the passing of a risk assessment instrument administered by probation parole staff and a qualified treatment evaluator. Positive results include an assessment for the presence of a mental abnormality, a level of denial regarding the offense, treatment appropriateness and motivation, presence of sexual deviant interests. The offender was evaluated by the Clear Creek District Courts with positive results, determining him to be a sexually violent predator. Thank you.